To get started with your first form, just click on the Forms button on the menu bar, click on Create New, and hit Form. Here, you'll find the four kinds of forms that MailMunch has to offer. These are popover forms that show as an overlay on top of your website, top bars that stay stuck to the top or bottom of your web page, scroll box, these scroll up from either the right or the left of the page and only show when the site visitor has scrolled up or down a certain percentage on the website. Lastly, we've got embedded forms that can be embedded permanently into any part of the page. Once you've selected the type of form, in this case, we'll select popovers, you'll see a selection of pre-built templates that you can choose from. Let's start with this one called Postman. You're gonna wanna give your form a descriptive title that will help you recognize it later. But don't worry, because your site visitors won't see this title. Select the list that you wanna use to save all the subscriber details collected from this form and hit Start Building. The following page is the form builder, which gives you a real-time preview of all the changes you make to your form. So any changes you make on the left of the page will be instantly reflected on the right to give you a visual representation of what your form will look like on your site. So let's change the heading, description, and footnote. When you're happy with the primary message, just scroll down to the success screen headline to create a thank you message that is displayed after a visitor has signed up. If you're happy with the content of your form, hit next to go to the appearance tab. Here, you'll be able to change the colors of the buttons, the backgrounds, and the size of the form. So let's take a look at these options. We'll change the color first, We'll make the form slightly wider. We can also choose how we want the form to animate when it's triggered. You have a few different options to choose from. This next option allows you to toggle the MailMunch branding on or off. Lastly, for the more advanced users, you can set your styling using custom CSS as well. So once you're happy with the content and the aesthetics of the form, you can add fields for the information that you require from your audience. Bear in mind, the email field has been added by default and cannot be removed. However, you can add other fields such as first name, last name, and phone number. You can change the order of these fields, which will be reflected on your form preview. While selecting these fields, you also have the option to make any of these fields mandatory or optional except the email field, of course. Lastly, we'll enter the text for the button and move to the behavior tab. This is where you control when and where the form pops up on your site. Show on page load will make the form pop up when the page finishes loading. You can also choose for the form to pop up when the visitor is about to leave your website, also known as exit intent which essentially means when a visitor moves their cursor out of the primary window to close the page, this form will be triggered to pop. Now this is great because it brings people's attention back to your website with a well-timed offer. The next option is don't show on first visit. This will prevent a form to be triggered for a visitor if it's their very first time visiting this page on your site. You can even choose how long you want the site visitor to be viewing the page before the form pops up. So if we set the loading delay for 10 seconds, the visitor will have to be on the page for at least 10 seconds before the form is triggered. If the form appears for a visitor and they choose not to subscribe, you can choose the number of days to elapse before the form pops up once again for the same person. Once a site visitor has subscribed, you can select once again which list you'd like to save their details to. There's an option to redirect subscribers to a different page of your choice. And as a premium feature, you can choose to be notified when you have new subscribers. The display rule section is a very powerful tool. It allows you to control which devices you want the form to display on. So let's say you have a form which is optimized for desktop and not for mobile or tablet. We'll just turn these options off. Or you can choose this form to appear only on mobile devices if you've got a special offer or information for users who are viewing the site from mobile devices. Using the new display rule button, you can control which pages to associate with this form. If you don't add any rules here, it will pop up on all pages of your site. 
The content gate is another useful feature. If you have content on your website that you don't want people to access until they subscribe, you can turn on the content gate feature. Bear in mind, this will turn off the close button that allows a visitor to get rid of the form overlay, which means the only way to close this form now is to enter the required information and submitting the form. However, we do recommend that you use this feature sparingly. If you have additional tracking pixels, like the Facebook or Google Analytics pixels, with which you'd like to record when the form is viewed or when a user subscribes, you can use these two options to trigger that script. The last section is spam protection. Basic spam protection is already built into all MailMunch forms, but you can also turn on Google's reCAPTCHA implementation, which is triggered as soon as MailMunch senses a bot trying to access these forms. On the Integrate tab, you have the option to send the data collected in this form to any of your email marketing service providers. We support all of the leading email marketing platforms out there. You also have the option to skip integration and use MailMunch as your single app for subscriber management and email marketing. At the end, we just hit the Publish tab where the form is not turned on by default. However, as soon as you activate the form and hit Finish, this is an active form running on your website as we speak based on the display rules you've selected.